We are about to be live on Facebook. All these fine young people. All right, guys, we are live with Jimmy Coleman. He has been gracious enough to come and talk to us about LinkedIn. How are you doing this morning, Jimmy? I'm awesome today. How about Good. you? I'm ecstatic to be here. Uh, LinkedIn has been one of my uh, nemesis, <laughs> and I've really been trying to figure it out, and everybody here is as well, and you are the go-to guy is from what we hear. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll roll into LinkedIn. For sure. Um, so uh, let's see. Personally, uh, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I, um, I'm I just, all right. So we got to make sure this is in a private group, right? Yes. All right. Uh, sh you're going to hear all kinds of secrets today, but, uh, I'm proposing this weekend. So that's an exciting thing. Um, hey, congrats. I've been with, been with uh, the high school sweetheart for a long time now. And, uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's cool things going on, uh, professionally though. Um, um, in regards to LinkedIn, I think people want context to this. Um, I, I started uh, hitting it hard with LinkedIn about five years ago, um, and really just out of out of need, out of desperation, because I um, I was in a really small town called Waynesboro, Virginia, and the people that I wanted to get meetings with weren't necessarily in that town, and so I had to go to LinkedIn to um, to network with people that are that. You know, uh, I couldn't find it like the Chamber of Commerce meetings, you know, the B&I right. meeting, stuff like that. And so um, I, had a, I had a shoot real high and LinkedIn was the place to go for me to get those higher, higher end clients. And um, and I made all the mistakes like I'm, I'm the type of person that just takes massive action. I love I love playing the numbers game when I can. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the problem I ran into is I was in the financial industry. I was I was actually positioning trying to position myself as an advisor to my clients uh however what i was doing on linkedin was just spamming everybody i was just building up these targeted lists of people i wanted to connect with and i was just blasting them with these spammy messages and so it's funny when you say linkedin's your enemy you probably meant that in a couple of ways like first off it's your enemy because you can't figure it out maybe but then the other part of it is like it might be your enemy because it's just so annoying it's such it's one of the most annoying places for people to be right now because they're just getting hit with pitch after pitch and yeah. the quality, the quality of the pitches are bad. Like I appreciate good marketing, right? Like right. someone trying to sell me something and I don't need it, but they, they use some creativity, some stealth to, to, to get in front of me. Like I'm going to entertain that and respect the hustle. Right. But if it's uh if it's just like a cheap tactic, like, like you see past the BS, then, um, then it's just annoying. Right. So there's a lot of that going on on LinkedIn right now. Uh, cause people don't know what to do. They don't know how to crack the, that nut. So, um, I was doing that four or five years ago and, um, and then eventually found solutions, found ways for me to be able to predictably scale my business, grow leads and things like that without annoying everyone that I'm, I'm connected to. And so, um, uh, plugged it into the financial financial industry, got really cool results there. Started getting meetings with like multi multi-millionaires as a 22 year old and just really cool things started happening there. But, um, then I took it to a medical startup company in, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, which is why I'm here in Charlotte now. And, uh, we did a couple million dollars in the first year from implementing this system and, and doubled the sales team from 25 to 50 people. And then, um, the next year I became a partner in that company and, uh, we obviously just trained everyone on the system and it created, you know, tens of millions of dollars. And, and extra, just extra revenue in addition to what we were already doing. And so uh, <laughs> naturally I started showing some people that I cared about how well I'm doing this. And mm -hmm. they were so thankful. A lot of coaches, a lot of consultants and things like that, which by the way, if you guys could comment, um, put in the comments, what it is that you guys do so we could maybe tailor the message for you. Uh, that'd be really helpful. Right. But um, uh, a lot of people I'm working with, a lot of coaches, consultants, people have premium brands and and everyone knows you can get results just playing the numbers game. Even though you get like 90% of the world to hate you, the 10% that say yes, like that's all you need. But for people that are in a position of being premium brand and advisor, a consultant, things like that, you need to be able to have both, have both the results and to keep your reputation intact um, nice. or even elevate your reputation in every interaction, not just maintain. And so 
Um, so anyway, I started teaching these guys and they, they started telling me that like, Hey, what you're, what you just showed me is way better than um, what these other guys showed me over here who are supposed to be like LinkedIn experts and stuff. And, uh, and so I said, okay, that's neat. So created a course. Um, I do have a course now. My, the most fun way I help people though, is usually like, is actually like being there live teaching them myself um, mm-hmm. and uh, started, started teaching people a lot of things. And what's, what's just so cool is that as you guys know, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people who are wanting to get on LinkedIn and they know the opportunity. They hear Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, guilting everyone into hopping on LinkedIn and, and talking about the opportunity, but very few people are offering a solution to generate business outside mm-hmm. of, just blasting everyone you know outside of just sending thousands of messages and playing the numbers right. game so i think that's one of the reasons that we've been able to pick up so much momentum um and and get the meetings to the people we have we have conversations rolling on right now with big names like if i'm not sure if you guys know brad lee uh, he's mm-hmm. a client um talking to jordan belford's team and um and billy jean um potentially even damon john like all these big names because they love that mixture of both getting results and being able to keep the reputation intact. So, awesome. So, with LinkedIn, what who who is LinkedIn for specifically? I mean, is there specific um, niches or niches, however you want to say it, mm-hmm. or LinkedIn? I mean, because I know not every platform's for everybody, and I always tell everybody not to spread themselves too thin because if you're going to start it, you need to keep on it. If, you know, it's better than starting and leaving it. So who is LinkedIn? Yeah. Sure. So um, LinkedIn is especially for people that are in business to business. If you sell to other professionals or other businesses, um, mm-hmm. and that ranges from selling, uh, you know, copiers to, uh, to being a, an executive coach or something like that. Um, but, and, and so that's like, that's like the easy path of path of least resistance the low hanging fruit like if you're if you're doing that then you definitely need to be on linkedin it's just simple if you're in a position where you do sell more business to consumer like one of my best friends i was just hanging out with him this morning he is a chiropractor and we've actually been able to get him really cool results on linkedin um but we're we're talking about okay out of all the consumers in the world what type of professionals are the best for you to target Gotcha. And for him, it's like people that uh, are like yoga instructors, people that uh, are like holistic health doctors, people that, um, you know, are into that alternative medicine type of thing. And so we've been targeting those people and, and helping him build a community around those people. And now he has like in Charlotte, he has this group called like the Charlotte Holistic Health Community. And he's been able to build that. And so it, it, these are the people that are both going to be good clients and also generate tons of referrals for him. So there's ways you can hack it if you're more B2C. Uh, but this is especially for people that are um, in directly in business to business uh, or business to professional type of positions. Awesome. So what, what would you recommend? Because when you get started, you, you start hammering out friend or connection request, I guess is what it's called on LinkedIn. I mean, do you just target the people that you're wanting to put in, you know, that could be potential clients? Is that how you recommend people get started on there? I mean, and uh, to grow their LinkedIn profile? Yeah. I think based on that question, there's probably uh, probably a good place to start is actually I have, I kind of mapped out like four phases for you Mm -hmm. to hit when you're on LinkedIn. Um, And what you just talked about is is really phase two, because what the position I ran into was I I was when I was a financial advisor, I was at Northwestern Mutual and Mm -hmm. LinkedIn used to do this thing where they would rank your profile and compare your profile to all the other uh, LinkedIn profiles out there um, based off of the number of views. And they would do one for out of your connections, another one for like based on uh, the people that you are, um, you're in the same company with. And mm-hmm. Northwest Mutual had 26,000 profiles on wow. LinkedIn. And month after month, week after week, I would be the most viewed pro- profile in the entire company of all 26,000 people over and over and over again. The problem is that it wasn't converting into anything. And that was because if you go to my profile, you'll see this basic, boring headshot 
a headline that says, you know, financial advisor kind of thing. And uh, my background picture was the company logo. I was a, just a fanboy of the company, like a lot of people are. And my mm -hmm. summary was a pitch of why I'm the best financial advisor in the world. And no so one cared. Your, your profile, then, you're, you're basically saying don't even friend request or any of that until your profile is on point. Yeah, it's just going to create more efficiency. So this is more of the art versus the math, right? And so that, that's the two things to focus on. And phase one is much more about the art. Phase one is all about creating efficiency. You're going to get better results from taking massive action. If you have a profile, it doesn't just box you in and make you look like everyone else that's selling what you're selling. That's the, that's the funny position that a lot of people are in is that the people that they're targeting are one of like 10, one of 100, one of thousands of people that are targeting that same exact professional. Mm -hmm. And so if you look like everyone else and everyone else is just sending these spammy messages, why would they want to connect with you to begin with? And why would they care about your your pitch of why you're the best in the world like everyone else says that they are. So what I changed was I stopped talking about what it is that I do, which is kind of a funny thing to do on LinkedIn because that's, that's, you know, I break a lot of rules, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, that's that's how you win because everyone else is following the rules and I break Right, them. I think outside the box, right? 100%. And right. so I talk more about who Jimmy Coleman is. If you guys go to my profile, if you search Jimmy Coleman on LinkedIn, I'll probably be one of the top people to show up. And uh, it'll say like chief giving officer. And that's how you know it's me. But uh, uh, you won't see anything about Jimmy Coleman being like the LinkedIn expert or anything like that. I'm targeting the same people that the other like LinkedIn experts are targeting. And so they're getting hit up by a bunch of LinkedIn experts. Like who, who cares about that? Right. So I'm, I want to make, I want to sneak in and be more about, people connect me more as a human being and what i realized is when people find reasons to connect with me as a human mm -hmm. they want to do business with me right right and right. so um my my background picture now is me doing like a selfie like this but there's a crowd of people behind me and it's all like social proof uh so people it shows people that i'm trying to connect with and people that i'm trying to do business with that um that people are bought into what i'm doing and what i'm saying right because mm -hmm. the time that people are going to go to your profile isn't what everyone else says all right so here's what everyone else says everyone else says have your profile have tons tons of like keywords and and things like that all of your profile so that if someone were to search for the services that you sell on linkedin that you would show up at the top of the list mm -hmm. here's the thing though most people aren't really using linkedin to find people to buy things from they're using linkedin to hunt not to be hunted Right. right. So um, um, the people that are like searching for you are the people who are just really just searching to like sell you something most of the time. Mm -hmm. The time that people are going to go to your profile is two scenarios. Most, most commonly when you're trying to connect with them and also when you're in a message conversation with them and, and you mm -hmm. might try to take that relationship to the, next, to the next level by offering a meeting or a phone call or, uh, or inviting them to your group like you have here. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, so if you're going to be taking massive action like that, make sure when people go to your profile, they just are attracted to who you are as a human being. My, uh, so my background picture is like social proof. My, uh, my profile picture is you is usually either me speaking on stage or it's me engaging in a conversation with someone. Cause it, again, it's, it's social proof that there's someone who's agreed that I have knowledge in my head that's valuable for them to listen to, right. which makes them which positions me as a more valuable person, right? To connect right. with. Um, my headline draws a lot of intrigue. It's chief giving officer at grow and give company. Like I chose the name of my company for a reason too, um, for a lot of reasons. But one of them is because it, it draws people. And I've a couple of people message me every week. It seems like, um, like grow and give. That's really neat. Like, what do you guys do there? seems like a neat concept. Chief right. giving officer. What, what do you, what do you do as a chief giving officer? It's thought provoking, right? Um, it gets conversations rolling in. And then my summary is not my sales pitch. Actually, my summary is my vision statement. It's all the things I want in my life. And to like, not like surface level either. It's like deep stuff that I wrote in a journal a while back and never thought I'd share with anyone. And eventually had the cojones to, you know, just make it public and step out on a ledge and be vulnerable. And the response from that has been super magnetic. I get messages every day from people saying, Hey, read your summary, thought it was awesome. I really connect with you know you about your faith. 
happy, how you feel about your girlfriend, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, me sharing, me sharing that I'm getting engaged this weekend with your audience makes them like me more. That's, it's just a fact. It's, it's something right. that connects us as human beings. Right. And I try to bring that to the light right. on your profile. So we have a question, um, from Shadell. She does an MLM, um, and it's health, non-toxic products, household products, and travel industry. She needs customers and to build a team. She wants to know what should her banner be like if she's trying to build her MLM? Um, I think a good thing to question is what is your, what is your avatar? So like my friend who's a chiropractor, he, his avatar is someone that uh, shops at Whole Foods, works out at Lifetime, which is like the nicest, it's like a club around here, but it's a gym, Lifetime Fitness. Uh, uh, who do you know that, that, that eats at clean juice, which is like another bougie thing. It's a bunch of bougie people, right? So we're all, we're all the bougie people going and uh, who, who do you know that wears yoga pants, uh, but actually does yoga, you know, uh, like, uh, like all that stuff. Uh, and, and okay. Now we, now we know who your avatar is. Um, what do you have in common with your avatar and how can you showcase that on your profile? So I have a client who his profile picture is a picture of him giving his son a piggyback ride. Now his target audience are mostly fathers who are about 35 years old. And by the way, he's not selling like a, a men's only thing. It just happens to be the case that he, he sells like day trading secrets and stuff. Right. But he just knows that his target demographic is that's the low hanging fruit. Right. So right. he wanted to showcase the similarities that he has with the target audience. So when, when he's prospecting and he's like hustling, He's, he has a picture of him and his son, and I don't have a son, but if I saw that, I'd be like, man, this guy's probably dealing with a lot of the same shit that I'm dealing with, a lot of the same struggles, right. um, and, and like we had that bond, right, that thing that we have in common. And so I would say uh, for her, like, does she have a family, and does her target market have a family? Maybe your background picture is, is, uh, is you just a family portrait or something like that. It draws, draws people in and makes people trust you more, and, and also – people tend to do this online where they don't treat you like a human being, right? People say some of the worst things they've, you could ever imagine to each other online yeah. and, and treat people horribly. But if they're sitting you know, right next to me right now, they wouldn't have the courage to say that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and, it, and part of it's just because it would be like you empathize with a real human being, but when it's just a digital thing, it doesn't, it doesn't feel the same emotional connectivity. So uh, how can you how can you create more of that emotional connectivity on your profile with the people that you're prospecting with? That's that's something I would consider when you're looking at that headline or that background picture. So just be relatable with your audience, whoever you're trying yeah. to target. So yeah, yeah, she said, do I need a separate page for my link or for business in my LinkedIn? She has a a business profile because she still carries a nine to five corporate. Um, job currently um i think she could definitely use that to her advantage actually um we've all been there when we're transitioning from nine to five to entrepreneurship and i get that question a lot and i always i always think to myself all right how can i use this position to my advantage and what i think that it'll allow her to do uh depending on what that nine to five is is uh, it'll allow her to not have to just identify herself as a network marketer. And again, more as like a human being, like let's say she's a cafeteria lady or she's selling insurance or whatever, it doesn't matter. If she genuinely wants to connect with someone, um, it doesn't really feel like there's strings attached because yeah. she's not identifying herself yet as a network marketer. And if she can't, and so long story short, I usually don't recommend two profiles. That's just a, a common question people have. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, by the way, it's all comes down to personal brand. Um, yeah. it's, your, it's your personal brand. So if she wants to say that she is um, the company is her actual name and she's like the founder, like that's there's nothing wrong with that. And she's just building her brand. Um, but uh, long story short, I think that she could she could network with people without them trying to box her in as another network marketer, another MLM or, or anything like that, uh, and use it to her advantage in the meantime. I, I think that's great advice because if she yeah. if she has, well, most 
MLM people, it's a side gig anyways, right? So it's extra mm -hmm. money is how I would see it. So, uh, you know, you never know if those corporate connections, those people are needing the same thing. And like you said, it gives her, it, it's almost sad, but it almost gives her a little bit more credibility being um, right now at the in nine to five. And like you said, relatability maybe is more of the, the term for it and have that MLM. I like Yeah, that. as a matter of fact, she should, whatever her job title is now, it'd be neat for her to maybe target. Like, I imagine the reason that she's interested in, in network marketing might be a similar reason that other people that share her current job title or current profession are also interested in mm -hmm. finding another way to live their life. And so um, I could see that she could target a lot of those people. And as a matter of fact, even build a community. Let's say it's, again, let's say that she is a front desk person or something like that. And you create the freaking front desk tribe or something. And yeah. eventually it's that whole Gary Vaynerchuk jab, jab, right hook. She's in a position where she could do that. And, and that's the big difference between like Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone, right? Grant Cardone's like, Hey, I got bills to pay this month. Right. I, for me, I'd much rather operate from the standpoint of like Gary's like jab, jab, right hook, but it's a bit of a luxury, right? And right. Not if she was just to like quit her job and go off and do this, like she'd have to freaking be aggressive, right? But in the meantime, she can more focus on just building a tribe of people that are going what she's going through and mm -hmm. and then monetize it multiple ways. Monetize it by having a network marketing piece. Monetize it by having a live event. Monetize it by, uh, you know, having a mastermind or something like that. Um, and that's the big key for a lot of network marketers. Uh, the reason I don't work with most network marketers is because they're only doing network marketing. But mm -hmm. the network marketers I know who uh, I can help, that I can do a lot of work with, network marketing is a part of their business. They want to, they have a tribe that they want to, they want to add value to, but they also want to monetize. And network marketing is one of the ways that they're monetizing it. But first and foremost, they're working on their personal brand and building that tribe. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So after the profile is up and set and, and looking you know, on point, what's next? What's next? Phase two is uh, building thousands of targeted connections. So that kind of answers your question from before. Uh, do you just go and connect to these people? And long story short, the answer is yes. Um, and th this is also where people tend to ask a lot of questions about whether they should go and look into Sales Navigator or just do the free version. So here's, here's what I would do. If you're in a position where you can afford 80 bucks a month for Sales Navigator, then just sign up right away. Don't, don't even think about it. Uh, if, if you have other priorities, it's not quite there for you yet. What I would do is um, hop on the free version of LinkedIn, use as much filters as you can. And when LinkedIn tells you that you've maxed out your commercial use limit, then upgrade because you're taking enough action to where you can justify upgrading to the, the paid version, which is sales navigator. And I don't recommend, they have a lot of like low, medium and top tier um, uh, packages. Mm -hmm. Best one by far is Sales Navigator. Um, you can you can literally if it's on your phone. You can filter down to the zip code. You can make sure that every single person you're talking to is a C level executive, and not just a pretend C level executive. It's very common for everyone to call themselves the CEO of something. So right. you can make sure that it's a CEO that has 200 to 500 employees, or or one to 10 employees or that's self-employed or that has over 10,000 employees. They've been in business for a certain number of years. Uh, they're in, in a certain industry, certain geography. Get this. Imagine if you do this on Facebook, this is cool. On sales navigator, you can make sure that every person that you're talking to is within a certain group, like a certain LinkedIn group. Wow. Yeah. So imagine if, if I could like imagine this, imagine I'm competing with you uh -huh. and I want to steal all of your followers or all of your, your tribe members. Right. right. Then I'm going to target people in your group to connect with. Right. <laughs> right? And so you can, you can, you can kind of leverage the hard work that other competitors or other people who might be connectors in the industry, uh, mm -hmm. the tribe that they've built and, and target those people. Cause those are usually people that have shown that have taken that first step of showing interest in something. Right. Right. So, um, that's a, that's another neat thing. Sales navigator is just super cool become really specific, be really niche, know who your avatar is. Like, I can't stress that enough. And the reason this is important guys is because I started getting meetings with people, but 
one minute I'm talking to the VP of this ginormous energy company with thousands of employees and mm-hmm. I'm like freaking pumped, right? And right. then the next minute I'm driving, I'm almost late to my next meeting. I'm hustling to get there. And um, she doesn't prioritize my services. She's unemployed and living off the government and just wasn't a, an ideal target client for my, she wasn't in my avatar. Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, I just realized the level of energy I had in that meeting number one versus meeting number two. And I became addicted to that level of energy I got from that first meeting and, uh, and terrified of the level of energy I got from the second meeting. It was the biggest contrast. And so I, I started becoming just super, super targeted on who I'm going to work with. And I realized that there's a big world out there. There's so many people and you worry about like losing out on people. Keep this in mind, guys, Apple, Apple now, like, even though it seems like they like own the world, they started out with an avatar. They started out with a niche product, a niche service, and a niche audience. Mm-hmm. And then they saturated it. And then they expanded. And then they saturated that market and expanded to now it's global. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So not being too afraid, like having a child that stands for something, being really specific. I would add, if, you have, if you're starting out from scratch, treat it like an email list. Like I can't just create an email today and then uh, like an email address today and then send it, send 26,000 emails out. I said number specifically because I tried that one time and I, I found out what happens. <laughs> and so yeah. I can't use that email address anymore. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so, spamming. what's that? Did you get shut down for spamming? Oh, big time. Big <laughs> time. Yeah, I can't, I, I had to get rid of that. That's why my email address is now Jimmy C instead of Jimmy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, anyway, so, you have to warm it up. So if you're starting out from scratch, I would connect with about 25, maybe up to 50 people uh, a day. Mm-hmm. And then as, as you get to where you get into the thousands of connections, you can start, you know, connecting with about a hundred people a day. And there's tools that you can use to automate that. Um, there's a lot of, um, a lot of talk about automation tools on LinkedIn right now, because uh, there's, there's a lot of Chrome extensions that got shut down. And so, um, and detected. And as a matter of fact, the people that are using them, um, LinkedIn, like said, Hey, like keep doing that. We're going to kick you off basically. And so, um, the, the only automation tools that are safe are the ones that are cloud based. A really good one is called we, uh, we dash connect.io. Uh, so we dash connect.io and it'll automatically connect people for you while you're sleeping. Um, there's certain automation things that I like and other ones that I don't like. I don't really auto message people. Um, Do you um, message them as soon as you, if they accept your request or connection request? You could. And I'll, in phase three, I'll tell you why I don't though. Okay. And we're, but we're kind of, we're kind of there. So long story short with phase two, right. is just being extremely targeted who you're connecting with. And then just automatically connecting those people on a regular basis. Now that that also similar question, what you just said is uh, like, do you send them a, uh, do you send them a message as soon as you connect them? Like, well, like there's a way you can do it. Like while you're connecting with them, you send them a message, right? Right. Uh, I didn't do those um, mostly because one, I have a pretty Mm -hmm. cool profile. And if that's all people have to judge me based off of, then I'm going to win. Um, right. so I have a lot of confidence in that. The other reason I didn't is because it sounded like a good idea. A lot of, a lot of ideas sound like good things. And, and then sometimes when they're tried, they don't work as well. And that was, that was the case with the, um, sending the, the message invites. And, um, and I would say something innocent, completely innocent, but I realized it positioned me as more of a vendor than an, as an authority, um, right. just by the starting gate, even if it was an innocent message. Um, and also people didn't reply to that message and subconsciously it kind of like, yeah, it, really it like, get them. Oh, it, uh, sorry, uh, had a call come in, but, uh, it, it kind of programmed them to not reply to my following messages and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, cause they don't get notified the same way. So right. I, um, uh, I stopped, I stopped doing that as far as in this, in phase three, so we can go, go past phase two, but phase three. It's all about um, creating conversations. Awesome. 
And um, if you look at it from the bird's eye view, what we're talking about is con uh, connections turn into mm -hmm. conversations, conversations turn into relationships, relationships turn into transactions. And another more bird's eye view of that is conversations convert. So how can we get as many conversations as possible? And by far, by the way, guys, LinkedIn is the best platform for you to get to know someone that you don't know, but you would like to know. You can have 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. So it's not weird for you to connect with people that you don't know because mm -hmm. they literally built out the platform so you do connect with those people, mm -hmm. right? Or else you couldn't have 30,000 connections, right? Right. And then the other thing is... Um, uh, they make it really easy once you're connected to someone for you guys to even accidentally wind up in a conversation with each other. Uh, and what I mean by that is like, think of the difference between LinkedIn and Facebook for your birthday. So when it's your birthday on Facebook, like I think there's a place that I can go to find out when it's someone's birthday on mm -hmm. Facebook. There's a place I go. I don't really know where it is anymore, but on right. LinkedIn, I get a notification when it's someone, every, any one of my connections birthday. And not just that, there's a call to action. It says, say happy birthday. And all you gotta do is click that button. And literally the message is already typed out. Right. It's so weird that they do that, but they do it because they want a conversation to happen. The message right. is already typed out and all you gotta do is click send. So every time it's your birthday, all of your connections are two clicks away from starting a conversation with you. Nice. Crazy. That's, crazy right so yeah. th also think about that when you're connecting with people who are the top ten thousand people in the world the thirty thousand people in the world that when it's your birthday you want them to start a conversation with you right right um like that's such a cool thing you can leverage you can do the same thing uh whenever you change a job um i i've i've seen some clients just do this little trick they uh they erase their current position even if they've been in their company for three years <laughs> and they will um they will like post it as if they just started working there and just said they've been working for three years and all their notifications will get notified and there's a lot of messages coming in, right? right. Um, so long story short, guys, there's, there's actually, um, there's a checklist of things you could do every single day to get conversations going with your connections in a way that isn't weird. So one way you could do that is to congratulate everyone on everything birthdays, work anniversaries, job changes, you, you'll get notified. It'll, it'll show up in your notifications. So just checking that every day. And maybe if you want to create a higher response rate, adding in their name wouldn't hurt. If you want to even get a higher response rate, adding in a question, happy birthday, Justin, how did you celebrate? And it prompts a response, right? right. Or okay. I even go a step further. I'll go, I'm sorry, I'm rambling now. No, that's okay. I said open, open-ended question on that. But Shadell asked something real quick about the tribe. She said, when you say tribe in LinkedIn, what does that mean? Is it like a group inside of LinkedIn or is it just the connections you make? Yeah, it depends on your audience because there's a lot of ways you can build a tribe. Facebook groups is one of them. LinkedIn groups is one of them. Podcasts are one of them. Live events are one of them. Meetup groups are one of them. So, um, so LinkedIn has groups, a group setting? They do. However, it's going to be a uh, delayed gratification, right? Okay. Because uh, LinkedIn groups aren't doing nearly as hot with engagement as, uh, as Facebook groups are. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So if you're, if you're, again, trying to pay the bills today, then don't do a LinkedIn group. But um, it also, you want to look at your network. My friend who's a chiropractor, meetup groups are probably the best way meetup groups attached to a Facebook group are probably the best way for him to, um, you know, build his tribe, right? So basically just putting those people that you're connecting with and sending them over to your Facebook group, and then you can do face-to-face -face meetings. Yep. And that's phase four. That's phase <laughs> it's, four. It just flows so perfectly. It yeah. really does. You have to go in and get Jimmy's uh, course because this is detailed and so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you can build your tribe and, and all these even podcasts are great. I have clients that they, they're just going to do a podcast. As a matter of fact, they're going to break my rule of mm -hmm. not sending a message when you go to connect with someone and they're going to, they're going to be super specific about who they're connecting with. And they're literally, and this is a, just a little sneaky tip here that I'm giving you guys. They're literally going to invite every single person that they connect to, 
to a 10 minute podcast. It's like top tips in 10 podcasts. And, uh, and that's how they're going to land conversations with their target market. So they get the 10 minute conversation that's going to be recorded. And then there's the conversation that happens after that um, and say, Hey, by the way, afterwards, I'd love to just learn more about, you know, who you are and what you got going on and, and find out how I could be a resource, that type of thing. But it adds value. Like it, it, there's so many ways that you can do this. It's, it's, it's fun. It's really fun to, to, to help people with this stuff. Um, how many phases do you have? Is it just four phases or is it more? There's four phases. Four mm-hmm. phases. So the fourth mm-hmm. phase was starting. What was it? Fourth phase is what do you say to them now? It's, it's converting. Converting. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and by the way, so still in phase three, like another cool trick you can do in addition to like, you know, congratulating people and stuff sounds super simple. And if you guys have questions about what endorsements are, but endorsements are a really easy way. If you just endorse 60 people a day on LinkedIn, I, I did this by the way, I, I, I tried again, I was, I was doing the outbound thing and, and it was hurting my reputation. I had to first sound desperate and then transition to an advisory role with my clients and it, it was it felt funny um so i uh, i started using more of an inbound approach congratulating people on things and waiting for a response getting just needing a conversation before i pitch a thing that was my new rule is i need to get a conversation before i pitch a thing mm-hmm. and uh and endorsements were another way to do that every time you endorse someone they're two clicks away from starting a conversation with you and i woke up one morning after like just trying this stuff out I had like 20 messages in my inbox, all from people that I've been like banging my head up against the wall to figure out how I can get a relationship with them. And there they are sending me a message. And now what the heck do I do with this? <laughs> right. right. Um, and so I, that even that went through some trial and error because then I, what I did instead was like, I was like, okay, this is cool. And then I copied and pasted my three paragraph spammy thing and then sent it to them. And by the way, I got better results, right? Because they said something to me, I said something back. Right. And now we're, because it, now it's a conversation and it's, it doesn't feel as automated, but it still, it still did. Um, right. So, so then I realized like, look, they said something to me. I don't need to, this is a conversation. I don't, I don't need to blast them with a thing. Right. Um, all I need to do is just reply back. And so oftentimes what would happen, like I'll give you guys an example of what we do on our end. So if you guys connect with me and, and fall into my funnel, then this, you'll see this happen firsthand. But, um, uh, you know, I endorse someone, they say, thank you. I say, sure thing, Bob. Um, uh, uh, sure thing, Bob. I actually just started a Facebook group for people that want to learn how to grow their business using LinkedIn. Want me to send you an invite? And, that's option, by the way, that's option number two. So I, I skipped option number one because really phase four, you have two options. Mm-hmm. Con- option number one is convert or die is what I call it, which is basically like straightforward to the point. And if they say yes, oh, dude, it's you're going to close that lead for sure. Right. Uh, if they, but there's just a higher percent chance they might say no or not reply. The other right. option is something more along the lines of offering value first. That's, hey, sure thing, Stacy. Looks like you're crushing it. Uh, we'd love to have you featured on my podcast. It's the top tips in 10. And what do you think? You know, and a lot of people want to go home and tell their spouse that they're on a podcast today. So it's an easy yes, right? Right. Um, and so, so that's one option you could do. You could go for, qu- and then you have to, even from there, that funnel, if you're doing that funnel, then you have to ask a couple, couple questions like, all right, am I going for quantity and just trying to get hundreds of episodes and nothing wrong with that because you get hundreds of hundreds of conversations with prospects? Or am I going for more of a top-down approach, going for quality, going for influencers, and then um, using that as content to distribute to my audience? Uh, or what one of my clients is doing is he's going for quantity on the front end, and then he has like a legit like roadshow podcast, film cameras, all that stuff, and he's taking his best people and putting them on that. Um, so he's, he's kind of using that as a filtering process, but long story short guys, the, the principle is adding some sort of value. Uh, other people might call it a lead, a lead magnet. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I have like a mini course that's like eight or 10 minutes long that people can do as a lead magnet. That's like my Hail Mary thing. If someone says they don't have a Facebook group or something, then I say, Hey, no worries. 
I got I got this free eight ten minute mini course. Um, some people talk about using eBooks and stuff, um, right? But I'm I'm always trying to put myself in the shoes of my prospects, and mm-hmm. I just like I just feel like a lot of people are offering eBooks, a lot of people are offering webinars, a lot of people are offering these things. So I need to bring them into my community somehow first, because once I get them in my community, even if it's not a good sale for today they're not going to forget about me because right. they're going to get notified when there's a Facebook live going on or whenever I have an announcement, they're going to see a tribe of people who are bought into what I'm also doing. Right. And they're going to look at me as much more than just being a vendor at that point. Right. So um, having some sort of value to provide these people um, and then, and then offering your thing. Like what I do is they request to join my group. You'll see this. If you guys try to do this, um, when you request to join my group, question number one is, are you looking to generate leads from LinkedIn? And if the answer is yes to that question, then, well, you actually have three options. Option number one is A is yes, um, I am, but I haven't gotten any yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, option, option B is yes, I've gotten some, but I want more. Option C is no. And then I put in parentheses, if, if the answer is no, then this probably isn't the group for you. Mm-hmm. So everyone says yes, that they're interested in generating leads on LinkedIn. Cool. Now they're qualified. Mm-hmm. Question number two, we send each new member a welcome video. Um, what's the best number for us to text that to? We get cell phone numbers, right? Versus emails or versus messaging them. And we send them a welcome video. Hey, welcome to the leaders of LinkedIn. Um, um, Saul, you said you're looking at uh, get help generating leads. Haven't had any luck yet. Uh, we, actually, um, we actually just helped another client get XYZ result last month. If you want to hear more about how we did that, we have a free mini course. So you could just use this call link to line up a, a call with our team and figure out whether if LinkedIn's even a good place for you to market on your business with anyways. Um, and just text me back and let me know which one you want. And we send that over sidelines. It's not coming from my cell phone or a team's cell phone. Um, like there's all kinds of ninja tricks you could use like that. And the last question, this is important, is we are not short on new members. Any incomplete applications will not be approved. And obviously it's not a question. So I just had to add multiple choice and it's like, yes or yes, basically. So, yeah. um, so that way I'm offering value right up front, but I'm not like, like the, the sucky part about, uh, offering value up front sometimes is it feels like that Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, long-term approach. Um, um, but now you're also able to get their phone number right away and schedule a call with them right away mm-hmm. and have them in your community. And it's right. a bit of the best of both worlds. Right. Right. Wow. Man, my mind is blown. It's almost sort it's sort of like Facebook, but I think the rules are a little bit more or or not as uh, firm, I guess, with whenever you're setting up your Facebook for business versus your LinkedIn. I think because LinkedIn's all business. All yeah, business you'll get, all the Facebook time. you would call it out if you're talking about business. LinkedIn you would call it out if you're talking too personal, you know? Okay. Right. So I did hear something. Um, people say to be able to be seen in the um, LinkedIn algorithm, I guess, is to publish, not to create a post, but to actually publish like an article. Is that is there any truth to that? Um, people were saying that a lot, actually, like three years ago, and they've kind of moved away from it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, not to mean it's not going to come back. I, I just think for me, when it comes to like posting content, do all of it. Like, and that's what's, that's another, actually another thing that's cool about podcasts is you can repurpose that information, uh-huh. distribute it across like Steve Larson. This is yeah. for that person that's in network marketing. It's really good for them to look into how Steve Larson does it too. Um, but, uh, you know, he has one podcast and he told me that he distributes it across 22 different channels. Yeah. Like, wow, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, do when in doubt, just do both. Um, do both. but, but there's nothing wrong with either one posts are getting shared a lot right now. Okay. And the best posts, by the way, aren't talking about your statistics. It's it, usually the best posts empower other people or inspire people to gotcha. some degree. And LinkedIn, let's just, let's just acknowledge this too. There are people that there are therapists, there are specialists, specialized therapists who, uh, help people with their addiction to Facebook, addiction to Instagram, addiction to YouTube. 
there's not a single therapist in the world, I don't think, that is helping people with their addiction to LinkedIn. And that's because LinkedIn's timeline is pretty boring for the most right. part, which is why if you master it right now, you're going to, you're going to master it. You're going to like crack the code before. Like I, the only reason I know all this stuff is because I just cracked the code before everyone else. Right. I've yeah. been working on this for years. Um, and, uh, and, but the, the wave is coming. Obviously the wave is coming and there's people who are putting it off who mm -hmm. will regret doing that. Obviously there's things I regret, regret not hopping on board, uh, sooner with on, on uh, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, and LinkedIn is kind of a lot of people's second chance to right. to hop on board and to start pushing out content start putting themselves out there to start utilizing the, the new features to um to do all that stuff and to implement it all, all the advice that i'm teaching that other people are teaching doing it now versus later the return on investment is beyond 10x yeah. nice so where can everybody find um more about you more about your program and all that nice stuff um one, one thing you could do if you want, it's not weird if you want to just send me uh, a friend request on Facebook, connection request on LinkedIn. I'm good with all that. Um, let me know what you thought and the feedback questions and stuff. Um, uh, I can send people the free mini course as well. Um, a couple of really neat programs we have coming up is we actually are hosting the first ever LinkedIn retreat. Uh, that's coming up in a few weeks um, where we're going to have people flying from all over the place uh, who are like, at the for three days stay overnight food is included uh, uh stays included all that stuff and the mission of that weekend is that by the end of those three days every person has a system up and running for them to continuously generate leads through linkedin like i i'm okay with i i'm not the type of guy to buy a course and i'm, I'm the type of guy where if you want to hide something from me like put it in a book is, mm -hmm. is what they say yeah. um like i'll do all your books and stuff like that while i'm driving but um uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I'm too dyslexic to just sit there and read a book and, uh, and same thing with a course. So I really like handholding when I, when I'm learning something and not just handholding, but it's not about learning either. It's about implementation, right? right. We all go to these events and we learn so much. I imagine that there's a lot of things I taught here that you guys aren't going to be able to implement because there's too much information, right? So you got to right. take it like a buffet. That's why I always tell people like, whenever you learn something, a bunch of stuff, just, take it like a buffet like just take a couple of things you like right? right um but the whole point of this is that hey like we're we're going to be implementing it it's not hey i learned so much it's hey i accomplished so much so that's the cool thing we have coming up but long story short guys uh just feel free to connect with me on either either two of the platforms i uh i definitely suck big time on instagram uh, so if you're just going to do facebook or linkedin at both both platforms by the way i'm maxing out on um uh, on number of connections like facebook i'm kind of capping out i'm about to delete a bunch of people though and then linkedin i'm about to cap out at that thirty thousand mark so um, so does, is thirty thousand that the max even no matter what package you have with uh linkedin yeah but people can follow you uh, oh. after that yeah so we so, always just tell people follow me once you get over 30. if you have your link for your free course if you want you can drop it in the comments too and mm -hmm. you know after we, we're done here and uh, yeah and then guys feel free like you said to connect with them on linkedin or facebook uh or both actually whatever you want to do uh, jimmy this has been really cool because um it's put some clarity in my mind because i knew it was kind of opposite from facebook but you know you just don't know and i'm i'm not the the expert of all social media platforms for sure so this has been great i appreciate you coming on and and telling us more about it let me make Absolutely. sure we have any more questions here while i'm scrolling through i think we answered all the questions we did we rocked this one this has been really fun Good. i appreciate so much you doing this and we um are saying congratulations to you for this weekend uh, hopefully the rain holds off for you and you don't have to deal with that but definitely um thank you for connecting with me and them and i'm sure you'll see people coming over and um following you to get some more good advice. Yeah. Congrats to you for, uh, for putting this group together. It's awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, guys. So next up at 1030 is Devon Brown. He was the MC at the mastermind and funnel hacking live last year. And he's an affiliate marketer and 
straight up nice guy. So we'll see you all at 1030. Jimmy, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. All right, guys. See ya. Have a good one. Bye-bye.